You're listening to the Everyday Legends Podcast, the show that is dedicated to helping everyday men build legendary relationships with yourself, your partner, and your world. I'm your host, Mike Campbell, and the aim of this podcast is simple, to help you navigate life with more clarity, more confidence, and purpose-driven action, with plenty of stories, a load of lessons, and some loving straight talk. So let's get started. Well, brother, welcome to the Everyday Legends podcast. It's awesome to have you. I'm su- super excited to have a conversation and kind of see where we take this. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Mate, so where I want to start is, um, you know, <laughs> maybe going to hit you between the eyeballs a little bit. It's a question that uh, I think a, a lot of men can struggle with, but also it can take us anywhere. And so I just kind of want to give you the invitation to take it wherever you want to take it. And that is, Mick, please tell us, who are you? Mm. That is a um, such a great question, uh, and when you ask me like that, it's it's it kind of my heart skips a bit, you know, mm. because I I personally have always, you know, I just want to acknowledge the fact that I personally have always avoided that question. Mm. I've always run away from it not like run away like physically or just mm-hmm. emotionally never wanted to talk about all, all that kind of stuff about my, my identity and, and my lack of connectedness with, with my, myself and my family. So it took me a, a long time to figure that out. A simple question, right? <laughs> Why, but a lot it of seems us, simple perhaps. <laughs> yeah, it, it does seem simple, but a lot of us find it very, very difficult to, um, to actually look at that and, mm. and come up with the answers ourselves. Um, even when we do find our meaning, our purpose, and who, who, who am I and, and that sort of thing, like I ask myself every day, I, I still find it like I have to dig a lot deeper mm-hmm. and, and kind of peel all the layers back again and then just to find mm-hmm. what I'm looking for and then you start again the next day. So it's a constant thing. And I, I think that's part of growth. Um, I, if you remember uh, Manifest, um, mm-hmm. when I shared uh, during my talk, my identity, and it is uh, Yabina Cup. And that, that's what I go by. It's a... Uh, it's an analogy that's that's been told throughout the uh, generations, throughout the ages. So it's it's a it's an ancient myth, um, mm-hmm. and it, it. Long story short, it's it's about this uh, a warrior who had his uncle um, with him, and they travelled around the Torres Strait in a canoe, um, going from island to island, um, uh, basically killing other. Um, islanders um, and collecting heads well this warrior was collecting all the skulls for um, as, as trophies mm. so he, he was all he was pretty much messed up like internally um, his father his father left um, when he was little he killed his own mother um, so the uncle was with him constantly as a companion to guide and nurture him uh, to bring him back down to earth so to speak to teach him humility, to teach him grace and respect, even though there was so much going on inside of the warrior. Mm. Um, and it's why he was killing people. Mm. Um, when they were somewhere uh, doing a thing and, and the warrior, um, Kuyami his name is, was, and he uh, was loading, loading the canoe with all, all his, his prize. And it stunk, it stunk rotten, as you can imagine. Mm-hmm. Um, and the uncle Tumagan, he said, um, he said he whispered something under his breath that this, this is a really terrible place to be in. This boat, this canoe stinks. And, um, and, and Kuyam looked at him and said, well, what, what did you say? Because had he have said something that, like, had the uncle had have said the truth of what he said, 
and Kuyam wouldn't have hesitated to kill him, right? Right. Um, so the uncle then came up with this analogy and he said, Yabinakap Kulasika Susul Pagaswagel Mudanarek. So what it means is he uh, portrayed Kuyam, the warrior, as Yabinakap, the rock. And Susul Pagaswagel are little fishes swimming behind the rock. So this, there's, a, there's a rock that sits under the uh, ocean, on the, in the ocean bed. Mm. And the currents are really strong, right? And so what the fishes do, they, they swim behind this rock to seek shelter, to protect them from the currents. And that's how he, uh, that's the analogy he used for, for the warrior. When you really look at the story, it's actually the uncle that was the rock mm. because he was the one that was teaching uh, the, the true cultural values. And Kuyam was the fish swimming behind the, the uncle. That's why in our culture, uh, Torah Shere culture, un uncle are the most important people for young, young boys. Mm -hmm. Uncle are the most important men in our lives. They're like, they're, they're, they're the status is, is bigger than a father. Right. Yeah. So which is why everything we do from our initiation to our hunting practices to everything and anything that a young man does, the uncle is there to teach him. Um, so I go, it's a long answer for your question, <laughs> but I go with that. I go with Yabina Cup is who I am. And when I introduce myself to people at, like at events and stuff, mm -hmm. I, I make sure I acknowledge where I'm from, mm -hmm. so Wagadagamulaig, from the tribe of Wagadagam, Ngai uh, Kodal, which is I'm a crocodile, mm -hmm. I told him he's a crocodile, Kuki uh, Gupalaig, which is the uh, northwest wind, and Baidam uh, Zugu, which is the, the uh, constellation, is the shape of a shark, from mm -hmm. a tribal constellation. Um, but in, in short, who am I? For me and my family, it's Yabinaka. And that's the rock that provides shelter for these little fishes to swim behind, especially for my kids. Mm. They, put, they, they swim there and seek shelter. And eventually they will become a bigger fish and be able to swim against the, the currents in their own life's journey. And then eventually they'll have their own family and then they can be the rock. The Yabina Cup for their families. Yeah. Beautiful Yabina Cup. Mm. Uh, thank you for that story. That's okay. So there's a, there's a few things I, I, I'm picking up in there, and I know you know a little bit about you, and you've got children, mm. and you're also a stepfather. Are you an uncle? Yep. So then with all of that, you know, because you being, as you said, identifying as you being a cub and I am the rock for, for the fishes to, to, you know, shelter behind and so on and guide, etc. So then there's clearly different roles that you have, right? Mm. Father, stepfather and uncle and with the importance of uncle. And then I'm assuming your, or, or please correct me if, if not, your children also have uncles. Yes. So, so how do those roles kind of play out for you, first of all? And, you know, with you, because as you said, you are that for your children, but then the uncle is such a, a hugely important role as well. So how does that play mm. out for you yourself and then kind of in your family dynamic? in like for my sons yeah uh, for your sons you know so so you know you are creating that rock for your children but then obviously you're their father not their uncle right so yeah. it, you know how does their uncles come into that situation and then and, and then for you as an uncle to to you know your nieces and nephews as well yeah um yeah look the the interesting thing with with my family um because my wife's from sydney Mm -hmm. and she's Australian um, and so obviously our children they they have the indigenous heritage and plus their uh, European background mm -hmm. um, so I'll, I'll get to that um, answer pretty sure. soon you know you know me I like to take it around, <laughs> take you on a journey before I get to the point please um, last year before the manifest I initially we, we, we had the initiation of, of my nephew, 
mm-hmm. my my sisters. Um, so it's more of the maternal side, right? Um, yeah. So I, my nephew had his um, his first shave, and I I initiated that. So I took that that process as as the head uncle. Mm. But when it comes to my sons, so Michael Jr. and Conan, um, they have their Australian uncles mm. because of their mum, because of the maternal uncles. And how does that play out for me is that I then practice um, that role of being an uncle to my nephews. And uh, the respectful thing that I, I have built with my brother-in-law's is that they are willing to then take on that uh, role as well mm. for my sons. And we've had uh, countless um, discussions about it. And I've been teaching them about the cultural side of things. Beautiful. And, and, and I, I even said to them, like, whatever you say, um, what my sons do, because you guys are the uncles, whatever you say, that's how it has to go. So if you just want to plump him down at, uh, could you uh, surf club uh, when he's 16 or 18 and, and um, you know, hey, here's a schooner, you're a man now. Like, that's, that's how it is. Um, but they've respectfully gone, no, we want to do it the right way. And we, which is, uh, hey, it's quite a blessing. Mm. Something that I'm very grateful for to, to be in that um, space, to have a family uh, members like them who are willing to, uh, go beyond their, their comfort zone to mm. learn about other people's culture. Yeah, and, and yeah, yeah to, to um, keep practicing that. And, and yeah, so I, I, I guess I, I just, as a Yabino Cup, I, I just lead through my uh, cultural values. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people, people see that. And my brother in laws, they see that too. Beautiful. Mm. So then, because you know this word initiation very important mm-hmm. and something that i think you know as a society we get to explore a lot more so then how important is this in in your culture but i also actually want to hear for you what was your process of going through initiation and am i right in kind of extrapolating that that simply is the journey from boy to man in this mm-hmm. context yeah. yeah so how did that play out for you and can you kind of yeah explain a little bit on that well, I look throughout my journey. Um, I, I've never really went through the process like this um, growing up, mm-hmm. and that yeah, that I'll probably explain that. Down Please the, tell uh, us, uh, give us a bit of your story. Yeah. Um, but it, it was uh, an eye opener for me because it was my my first time. Not 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 so much as an uncle that was uh raising or or mm. what we and is like giving advice and that to this young warrior i was actually going through this process for the very first time myself mm. does that make sense mm-hmm. as a person because i never went through it as a boy so I, I had to kind of go back to a little boy going through this process myself and learning what 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 were the the, the rituals were and the rightful um appropriate practices and that sort of thing so uh it was it was a very eye-opener um so what can you tell us then you know how come you didn't go through it what what was what prevented that oh look i um i when i i was born on thursday island, so i'm gonna go right back okay? thursday island yes yeah thursday island in the torres strait i was raised um on on my own on my island uh Mabuyag, where where my family is from where the tribe of wagadagam sits um on my mm-hmm. and i spent the first 14 years of my life um living away from mum so mum was on ti on thursday island right. um my biological father was never in the picture i can't i cannot remember him at all i have been introduced to him uh couple of times when I was little, um, but he was never in the picture. And so I was raised by all my uncles around me. And by that stage, they had kids as well. So they had kids to look after. And the situation was quite complex. 
mm-hmm. was quite like, cause there was influence from all different, um, you know, we, we were kind of going through all the, the European style of living, um, mm-hmm. missionaries, uh, uh, church, uh, Christianity being introduced into the, the straits. So we, I guess we were at a, at a time where people weren't unsure how to, how to adapt to the current world. Mm. And this was back in the late eighties, early nineties. We weren't really sure how, how to live in, in our communities because we went from living like hunter gatherers to then having been introduced to this different style of uh, living. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that's, that's entirely what caused me or not like what, what the reason mm-hmm. why I didn't go through the initiation process, but I just, there's a big uh, new influence by yeah, the sound of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I just didn't go through it. I, I just don't know why I, um, I did all the hunting practices and I did all the stuff. I guess I spent most of my uh, high schooling away in mm-hmm. Cairns. Um, and I'll go back for holidays and then back to school in, you know, on the mainland. Um, yeah, I look back and go, I have no idea what happened. And is that something you've explored with the community? With, with, with your my family? family? Yeah, yeah, with my family. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess everyone were in their own little, um, going through their own transitioning period as well, mm-hmm. going through their own challenges. And, and um, there was, at that stage, I was like, I was living with my grandma mm-hmm. and then my Grandma's sister took me in and raised me until I was 12. Um, and then I lived on the island for two years uh, with my aunties. And then I finally decided, well, I might give it a crack and move in with mum and my stepdad and, and the rest of the siblings. So, and since I was 14, I, I moved in with mum and yeah. So then what happened between, I'm sure a lot, between then and now that you have these children and you're you know clearly by the sound of it diving heavily back into culture and ensuring these initiations and you know the cultural practices and values are present and being passed on mm. where did your that's journey what, that's take what you I, uh, that's what i when i looked at my son um when he was three or four well, this was back in 20 2015 mm-hmm Towards the end of 2015, this this was before I did my first um, I had my first experience through the the warrior camp with James Winshields from mm-hmm. uh, as we know James um, from RLF. Um, I looked at my son and I said, he, "He's I I don't um, I, the way I'm going. I am going to uh, create the same space for him." as what I experienced when I was younger, when I was right. easy. And so yeah. when you say the same space, what do you mean by that? Like, how would you sum so, that up? So, so the, the lack of identity, the lack of connectedness that I experienced when I was mm. younger, I was going to then pass that on to my son, the way I was, the, the, my actions. Mm-hmm. Um, and no, so how, how do you think that impacted you? As a father? Uh, no, going through that lack of connectedness, et cetera, as, as a kid. Oh, I, I was, um, I was very confused, mm-hmm. very, very confused as to who I was very confused as to, uh, where I was going, what I was doing and all, all those things. And, and living in a remote community, you kind of had to just improvise a lot of, a lot of the time, just think, think for yourself and just think outside the square, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, because there, there wasn't much going for me at the time, um, in terms of, uh, you know, the family love and support and everything were there, but just, just personal connectedness, I guess mm-hmm. there wasn't really any of that, uh, available for me when I was little. And were there consequences of that? Do you think kind of at the time and then, you know, moving forward into your adolescence and adult life? Oh, great consequences. You know, I, um, I, I just cruised through high school without really showing any interest in it. Mm-hmm. Um, completed year 12 just for the sake of completing it. Uh, never really um, knuckled down into um, 
tertiary education Mm -hmm. uh, and I kind of just I was just going around in circles and Mm. wasted all my teens um uh, years drinking and uh, smoking pot and that sort of thing and just playing footy on Thursday Island each weekend um this is when I was uh, 20 21 um and then by the by the time I was 23 I I left home I, I said well there's nothing for me here so I might as well go away and seek somewhere else but that um that didn't work out that that wasn't like what I thought was going to happen or I might move away and I'll, I'll find something, but yes, something as in myself. And, yeah. And what did you find? Um, uh, when I moved away. Yeah. Same thing. It was the same thing. What I experienced when I was a kid. Um, was there a, was there that actual thought? Do you think I'll move away because I'm, then I might find like my thing, what the thing is for me, who I am kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Even when I even when I moved to Sydney to play NRL, um, well, not to play NRL, but just to, an opportunity to yeah to um. So this is at what twenty three was it? I was twenty three, um, so this was two thousand and seven six yeah. two thousand six. Uh, moved away. For, I I was in Bund- Bundaberg for ten months prior, mm-hmm. and I came to Sydney, and then I cracked NRL my first year of of being at the club at Manly and played at our like 40 something games and thought yeah you know i'm finally finding myself here mm-hmm. um I'm, I'm connecting to my identity this is who i am i was meant to be a superstar ah, right. and that didn't work <laughs> <laughs> so, so you then, think that's a kind of an identity that you started to really you know sit with i am the footballer i am you know to be a star absolutely yeah right absolutely oh, it's every an time interesting I'll shift from kind of not having anything and just going yeah. in circles I, I guess anything that comes around you cling on to it right you go well what this is this is going to be me and then you, you soon find out that it's it's not really who you are and so what happened next then <laughs> and so i went um well that's where i met my um corinda my wife now yeah and you, yeah you met corinda mm-hmm. and um and i moved to townsville uh did two and a half years up there playing for uh, cowboys yeah and and that, that was very challenging because it, it, it had it added a new element to my to my journey then because i was in a relationship mm-hmm. and she had two kids so she had to stay in sydney stay at an arrangement with the, the children's um father and i was in townsville living a long distance relationship um and then i moved back to sydney in 2011 we had our son in 2012 so michael jr and when he was born that's when i thought right children always change men Mm. children always make us you know uh, become a new so to speak and no that still, uh, I still found it very challenging as I did back when I was seven, eight years old. So there was obviously this, this conscious awareness for you that there was yeah. still something missing. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. like, why, 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 how come, like, why am I not happy? Like, how come I'm always, um, you know, passive aggressiveness was a big thing for me. Right. Like it was, yeah, I was just every day, like in the relationship and mm-hmm. with the kids, um, you know, with Krinda having two kids as well to a previous relationship and, and that really like, like ate me inside, you know, um, is that how they say it? Yeah. It's a new role to take on. Yeah. So not, not only I was a, a new father in 2012, um, or experiencing that father role for the mm. first time, but I was also a stepfather, and that that was still for to, for me personally, like internally, that that was still challenging. Like uh, mm. each day was like just just a day of trying to survive, really mm. uh, mentally. I was, I was just in, and I, I thought it was that. I thought it was just my the 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 years after I finished playing professionally, as they. I, I rode that roller coaster as well. Mm-hmm. 
and I used that as an excuse. I went, oh, footy's over now, so I've got lots of injuries, so I'm depressed. But that yeah. wasn't really why I was depressed. Like these were going back years and years to my childhood yeah. And, yeah. and also part beyond that, the, the trauma that my families and myself and everybody else have experienced throughout the years mm-hmm. up until that point. And that's when I decided. Like, but you're just not aware of this at the time, right? That just there's, there's this. I wasn't, no. Yeah, was, yeah. No. Of what it was, you're aware of something, but yeah. not really what, what it there was. There was constantly yeah. like, I wrote a blog once and I, I spoke about um, a relationship I had when I was in Townsville. I spoke about a relationship I had with uh, with her uh, and I um, spoke about the black dog. Mm-hmm. And there's a black dog institute, I think it is mm-hmm. for uh, mental health space mm-hmm. and I spoke about that I, in, in my blog and I wrote how each day um, no matter how things were going great for me this this dog was my constant companion mm-hmm. it was quite almost it was almost death coming at like knocking at the door going like I'm here also like you don't have to just live life where you are now you can also mm. yeah I was in that kind of headspace Kind and this of, is when you're still playing football, right? If you're yeah, up in town, yeah. Yeah. Um, after I finished playing football, I uh, did two years playing bush footy. Um, and, you know, by that stage, I had two kids, two of my own, uh, plus my two stepchildren. So my, my little family was growing. Mm. Um, I was, you know, married and uh, living in Sydney and things like that. And a long way from home. Yeah. So then we hit 2015 and you see, you look at your son and you say, I don't want the same thing for him. That's right. Um, what happens next? Not that I couldn't control that. Like whatever happens for him, it will happen. It yeah. has happened. It will yeah. happen. That, that's his journey. Mm. I guess what I was, was, what I thought at the time, that very moment, I, I actually picked him up. That I remember this day and I picked him up. I, was, I shook him. But I was so angry. I was so angry. This, just an anger just came out of me from, from the depths. And that's when I realized, um, like, this is not right. And then there was another incident not long after that with me and Corinda where we had this massive big fight, this argument. And I pushed her to the floor of the kitchen and I had the knife across my throat and, and I was saying like I, I just want to cut my throat right now I, I want to die I don't want to live and he, he I heard a little voice a little voice saying daddy and when I dropped the knife I looked turned around there he was junior standing there at the age of three I think at the time he had his hands over his ears because of the the noise we were creating mm-hmm. um, or we've created and that's when I realized, wow, this, this, I, I need to go on this search to find that person inside that, that, that lovely Mick Barney, that, that, <laughs> you know, the, the beautiful Mick Barney. I need to go and find him. He's in there somewhere. And that was that little kid, that little boy that, that I've, I've sort of neglected all these years growing up that I pushed him aside. And yeah, that's when I looked into myself and Mm -hmm. asked myself the question you asked at the start of this conversation, who am I and who do I want to be? What Mm -hmm. do I want to be? And go, go and find it. And I went on this journey, um, only to, you know, obviously guided by, um, the right mentors Mm -hmm. and coaches and, and, and friends and brothers only to realize that the the answer to that question was always inside of me. Mm -hmm. It was never anywhere else other than within. Um, Thank you for sharing that. Sorry, how's this journey so far? Beautiful. (laughs) (laughs) There's some very Uh, powerful things there and thank you for sharing that. So um, you yeah man i feel like i could take there's, there's there's a bunch of questions here but there's something actually that you, you spoke to which i think is going to link to all of this you know you wanted to find you in the lovely beautiful smiley mcbarney who's the one i know right because i met you i don't know don't know when 2016 or 
something mm. like that. Um, and yeah, but you said something in there, and you know, then you started to when you did, you started to explore your culture and 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 dealing with your trauma, and then the, what's actually been passed on in a sense. Mm. You, you kind of spoke about you know what what your your family and your generations have have kind of been through so can you dive into that what you're speaking to there absolutely um you I'm, know, assu I'm assuming this is something that you then started to really discover as you explored yeah. looking for mac the, oh, the more i think i've only found m <laughs> i've still got ick <laughs> ba and i had to find <laughs> It's a, it's a it's a lot lengthy process yes. but it's a it's a journey that's worth worth your while it's um it's it's taken me to great places and we did myself more so and um i you know as as i always say to the kids like to to find the, the cause of what's the causal issue of of uh, how we behave Mm -hmm. we, we have to peel all these layers of onions and mm -hmm. and onions make you cry and mm -hmm. you just got to keep peeling it back feeling it back and it's going to hurt um but eventually you will find that 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 the, the gem the gold within um within all that pain and um, whatever you're you're going through so it's it's been kind of like that since 2015 it's just been peeling a layer upon layer um you know we still have our, our challenges mm -hmm. our um our experiences where it's a you know to, to transition from one thing to the next and of course um life isn't all roses i know that's right um but then I'm, I'm guessing now there's there's you know there's the finding of elements of you as we're discussing but then also that's taking you into the culture mm. right and there's other mm kind of passed on elements yeah so to 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 kind of explain it um what we what i what corinda and i do uh or our, our company our family our personal selves what, what we base um even yabina cup um we, we we sort of work around what we've created the the kind compass and that's kind of like taking the emotional triangle so the spiritual emotional physical and that triangle mm -hmm. and adding that cultural element to it and i think it was like for me and for our children it was it's very very important because that that's kind of the looking back into to my childhood mm -hmm. through um, my teenage years um even my early 20s that was a thing that i kind of put it put to the back seat and said well I've never been through this initiation process, so I'm, I'm not going to worry about culture anymore because culture, culture did nothing for me. Mm. And, and so that was, that was that element of my inner self that was already, I already threw away. Mm. Was missing. And then uh, spiritual, the spiritual element, so there's four points, spiritual, cultural, mental, and physical. The spiritual element it was all just uh, christianity um so i didn't really uh explore any other uh spiritual um, beliefs or practices that are out uh -huh. there um other than christianity so that was kind of like almost just a one way one one way to do to practice your spirituality and would you say that, that knowing what you know now that I'm guessing is different, but did that also take away from perhaps what spirituality you might have learned through culture? Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's what I mean. Um, like something that I do now through meditation, I, could, I couldn't have done it back then because it was all about praying. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. No one really, I've never discovered meditation when I was younger. Um, and then also the mental element that comes into play. Uh, no one prepared me, or I didn't even prepare myself to move to a, a place like Sydney. Yeah. Let alone to play a professional sport and, and to have like a professional job, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, 
And obviously the physical element was always on my side. Um, I think just a, a gene thing. So um, and I'm not talking myself up here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but all the other elements were missing. Yeah. And it's kind of like that with, with my journey at the moment. Like I, I keep, I have to keep going back and peel all these layers back because there are still other elements that I need to mm. um, need to address and need to identify and explore and embrace and and um, acknowledge in that. Uh, so, in answer to your question about um, or, or your suggestion to share with you about the, the trauma, mm. I have now um, gone into it in a, in a cultural level because I've just recently discovered that um, my biological father's side uh, goes back to the Aboriginal community from Normanton. And that's in the Gulf up in North Queensland, the Gulf okay. of area there. Mm -hmm. And Normanton, they, my great, great grandmother was part of the stolen generation scheme in australia mm -hmm. so her family was uh, uh shipped up to the, the community in north queensland and her daughter was taken away from her never to be seen again um so that's the tr that's the the trauma in itself mm. and because it's my biological father side it has been passed on from generation to generation. And I carried that with me when I was young, mm. teenager, moved to Sydney, married, husband, father. I have that, I have that line of trauma of going through that, um, uh, that, that, that experience that my um, great, great grandmother. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, then what have you learned about that? You know, this intergenerational trauma and perhaps how has it specifically impacted you? Do you think? It's, it's, um, it's another piece of my identity hmm. that's undiscovered. Yeah. Another piece of my identity that, uh, that adds to, to my, um, to, to like it, it's a piece of a puzzle, mm -hmm. so to speak, mm -hmm. and and if that's uh, impacted me, then I can only imagine how it Im impacted and still impacting the the families mm. and the communities who are still going through that kind of uh, experiences. Yeah. Well, quite directly, the, the generations yeah. above you, so your exactly. biological father uh, yeah. and so on beyond that. Yeah. Is, is that. Is that something that you have want to like explore with your father? Is that possible? Do, can you speak to that at all? Look, I, um, I sort of had to, you know, I held a lot of resentment towards him mm -hmm. uh, and towards my mum as well and that, that was the thing that i had to really look at was it wasn't just a a, a a fatherless connection that i had with my biological father mm -hmm. or lack of connection um because when i finally healed myself with that then i also had to address my mother's wound if you familiar with the mother wound mm -hmm. um please go on for us I <laughs> she is so I, please dive in. So I then had to address that how um you know my my wife and her son uh, her oldest son my stepson they they're going through the same thing mm -hmm. they're experiencing the same thing and and I'm I'm just here holding space uh, sharing my journey of what I went through when I was uh, my stepson's age yes um, and the relationship that I, or lack of relationship I had, not just with my biological father, but with my mother as well. Mm. Um, because we spent nine months in a mother's womb and everything that we are through our DNA is passed on through the mother to us. And then we 
Like that's why like our belly button in our culture, a belly button is the most important, like sacred, which right. is what it's called a, in the um, chakras. Is that the practice that um, people do where there's mm-hmm. is that sacral or sacral? Yeah, I'm not sure. The most sacred uh, sh- 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 chakra sits, sits there. Yeah, uh, I think. And what's the name for it in your culture? Uh, Maita Kupai. Maita Kupai. Yeah, Maita Kupai. So Kupai is like the, the cord that ties us. Right. And that, and that cord, the umbilical cord, physically it's an umbilical cord, and you cut it, and you've experienced that recently, mm-hmm. cut it. But you never, ever, spiritually and emotionally, you never cut that. You, you just don't. It, it just mm. doesn't happen. You are forever connected to your mom. And so when things happen in our lives, where, um, whether it's uh, by choice or whether it's forceful removal, like my great great grandmother mm-hmm. um, with her daughters, that's, that's severing that connection mm. emotionally. And that's the mother's wound. For me, I yeah. Try and so then, when you say, "Can you can you kind of explain to us?" So that's the mother's wound, meaning that there's an absence there. What does that What does that kind of mean? If you expand upon it for us, yeah, there's um, there's through neglect, I suppose. Some people would say that, um, mm-hmm. or through because uh, mom just couldn't really come and take me from the island because um, uh, it was kind of like a, a cultural thing that once. Once our grandmas or our aunties take us in, then you, you cannot say anything. Right. And it is still practiced like that back home as we speak. Um, but I, I feel from my personal experience uh, that that almost deprived me of having a relationship with my own mother. Mm. So growing up, I, I for the first 14 years of my life, I, I barely knew her. Mm. And... Um, when I moved in with her, when I was 14, I spent two years with her until she had to move again back to where we're from. So it's kind of a complicated story. Mm -hmm. Um, and then with the high school and then leaving home throughout my 36 years, I think I've only spent three years actually being like in the same, uh, living with mom. And then that's you don't really build relationships mm. by being away. You kind of have to have that interaction, mm. that, that face-to-face, um, eye-to-eye contact. You kind of have to have that uh, nurturing growing up, the giving advice and that sort of thing. You can't just do it when, when you're so far apart. Um, and I, I think that's what I was deprived of when I was little mm-hmm. um, with all these cultural protocols that were at play that I never got to really spend time with mom and get to know her. And with- so you feel that you were in the culture, right? There were certain aspects. So you were obviously learning and, and, and being passed on some elements of the culture. But as you say, with dad not there and also not being around your mother and then not going through these initiatory uh, steps and stages, there mm. was still clearly some gaps and some absences, right? And Absolutely. therefore, so these were these wounds created yeah. that you're talking about. Absolutely. Um, with, with the initiation, uh, you know, the both side of the family have to get involved, the mm-hmm. maternal more so, maternal side, because they're, they're like the, the gatekeepers, so to speak. Right. But the paternal side has to get involved as well. And with most kids in the Torres Strait, when we practice this culture, more often than not, the paternal side are never involved because they're so distant. They, they're, they're not even part of the picture. Right. And that was my nephew as well. And that was me when I was a kid growing up that I never really had my father there or my father's family Mm -hmm. um, to nurture and guide me as well. Um, And so I had to really heal that wound, the wound I carried, the the pain, um, the resentment, the anger towards uh, my parents, my biological parents. So what does that look like, the, the healing of that wound? Well, it was for me, I mean, people go through their own journey, I guess. But for me, I just had to um, acknowledge that, write it out on paper and release it. Um, mm-hmm. just, just tell them, like, 
not physically face to face, but just in my in my thought process, in my um, spiritual being, I just had to look at my uh, mum and dad, my mm-hmm. biological mum and dad, and say to them that you you guys don't you are not the reason why I'm like this. I am like this because of how I perceived all these um, experiences mm-hmm. growing up. And so I kind of basically say to them, they don't own me. They don't own my emotions. Mm. I mean, I own my emotions. I control my own emotions, my thoughts, words, and deeds. And I had to just release them. And, and when I did that, oh man, you, you, I guess you kind of, you, you put yourself out there to the universe. And as soon as I did that, mm-hmm. I get a phone call from my biological father. Right. Yeah. Like, just like that. I'm like, wow, the power of the universe or the power of God or something or whatever's out there, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, hello. <laughs> oh, man. I'm, I'm, so, I'm, I'm so close to finding the M. Uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, and then we just had a conversation, and we're both crying on the phone. Mm. And it's not like I, I wrote him a letter, physically wrote him a letter, or texted him, or called, rang him, and said, "You mm. need to talk." It just happened. Mm. And you know, he, when we speak on the phone now, he he, he acknowledges those uh, ears, those moments that that mm. he made, you know, of me growing up. And so do you think that that phone call was quite integral to, to that healing process for you as well? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and my mom, she never, she barely, you, you cannot get a boo out of her. Right. But every time I talk to her now, the, the conversation is so different and our relationship is kind of as more, it's, it's more nurturing. It's almost mm-hmm. like she's, she's, um, I'm, I'm that kid again. Mm-hmm. And she's, she's starting her mother process of looking after me as a child. Right. And it's different. Yeah. And it, it was just from that moment of um, me releasing them from, from my um, inner self. Mm-hmm. And I guess all those thoughts, all, all those negative thoughts I had towards them mm. were stopping me from forming that relationship. If that makes sense. Yeah. So the thing yeah. that you wanted from them, yeah or the things whatever they were exactly. nurturing and love etc were, mm. were being held back by your own stories and resentments around yes. yeah yeah and so that, so that, then in that there's a, there's wounds right and there's mm-hmm. there's absences and there's things that you've needed to let go and, and write out cathartically and, and release so then what do you think it, it was that you were missing what 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 was in that gap you know, that essentially created the wound that you were missing from them because you had placed stories right mm-hmm. around and blame, but what was that, 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 you know, little Mick was actually needing that perhaps might've negated a wound to start with. I, I think for me, it was, um, well, I have to say for me, cause it's not for anyone mm-hmm. else. Right? Um, I think it was more nurturing from both yeah. sides. Yeah, just just the, the way in which they spoke. Um, uh, when I see my biological father now from time to time, when I mm-hmm. go up to the Torres Strait, um, how he approaches me, how we interact, it, it all comes down to that nurturing. And that's, that's what I, like looking back to my, to, to my son's um, first few years of his life, I never gave him that. Mm. I wasn't really into that, um, like come here, cuddle and kisses and that type of stuff. Uh, so I never really gave him any of that nurturing because mm-hmm. in, I guess subconsciously I was thinking to myself, well, I never had that. So mm-hmm. why should I give it to you? So I was, I was very strict. I was mm-hmm. very, don't do this, don't do that. And I've already kind of had his, uh, He's planned out, um, he's only three and at the time. And also from my, my experience through, through playing footy um, and the way I kind of just um, got shafted to the side mm-hmm. that built up this anger inside of me about the, the game of rugby league. Right. I said to my three-year-old son that you're not going to play rugby league. 
Yeah. If you ever turn around to me and say you want to play footy, I'm going to say no because you're not playing that sport. It's, it's a terrible game. But that was just my anger that was sitting inside that I felt towards a yeah. thing and, and in life that throughout my upbringing and... And, and um, potentially passing on some of your own trauma again. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, that's yeah. what it was. Yeah. And that's what it was. It was just me then uh, reenacting what, what everyone has been doing throughout the years mm-hmm. and then just creating that same space as, as, as I was saying before. Mm. That, that That's kind of not what I envisioned for my for my child and he was just going to grow up the same kid as i was hurting as well mm. of not having a relationship with his father um even though he's around yeah even though mm. i was around and yeah. and he, it is a, i see a lot of that in, in um in all the communities where mm-hmm. most of us don't have uh, either a father or a mother or sometimes even both parents mm-hmm. aren't around and some of us who have parents around, we don't have that relationship with them. Mm. I think we do, but I don't, from my experience, especially when I became a father, I've never really had that, like that bond, that real mm. connection with my, my children. Yeah. So I had to really develop that um, quick smart. <laughs> um, they grow up so quick. <laughs> And I had to do that real quick in the yeah. last four, five years. Yeah. And turn my life around, I guess, to go, well, um, I, I need to be this light. Mm-hmm. I need to be this beacon for them, mm. this rock, this Yabina cup. And I need to start working on that mm-hmm. and, and, and focus on, on my inner self. So does that mean that you've kind of, in a sense, taken yourself through and i know you've been through some guidance and mentoring and so on as well a, a, a bit of an initiation sorry does that mean that you've kind of taken yourself through a bit of this initiation like i know you've also been through some some mentoring and some experiences mm-hmm. and so on but it, would you say that that's kind of been happening now yeah yeah i i almost had to create my own initiation mm. um whether it's it's if someone looked into it and it's uh, deemed uh, culturally appropriate or not, I'm not sure. But nevertheless, it was some initiation process that I had to go through on mm. my own, and um, and learning, I guess, bringing all the elements together—the spiritual, mm. cultural, mental, and physical elements—and tying them all into this this one um, thing. Or, or so, if it's a compass, like this, the center point of the mm. compass which is my inner core, my inner self. And now like living up here in the beautiful sunny coast as the sun is coming through, it's, it's a blessing because I, I have this space and throughout this COVID, um, I have this space to really look at each of the elements, to really look, look at each of the four points of my own inner compass and work on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Got been been dealt with a uh, uh, bit of a challenge in the last two years, and so I neglected my physical health, mm-hmm. um, and then I've had to then work on that since coming up here and having the space to do that. Um, so there's all these different things that I've got to look at within myself, and what what are what are the cause of why I'm not progressing? So with with my mm-hmm. culture, for example. Why am I not progressing with that? And then I look at the cause. Well, I not only have my mother's side of, of the family and, and, the, and the tribe and, and all that, but I also have my father's side, something that I also need to, that I need to explore still mm-hmm. because it's, it's a huge family. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So then, you know, I'm still, you know, from my own experience and, and education and learning, but also f- from this conversation, you know, seeing clearly the, power the impact the importance of initiation and it's by the sound of it something that you're still you know really exploring and and learning Mm. as well so can you share with us then like what do you see as the 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 point what what is its place this initiation this transition you know in a sense we're talking kind of from from boy to man Mm. um if if okay let me ask you this one to three, go wherever you want with it. Points 
for why we need initiation today? Oh, wow. Um, man. <laughs> Hit me. Okay. Um, firstly, personal development. Yeah. I think, which is very important. We all look at external things. Mm -hmm. We all look, blame things and blame people. And, and I think the purpose of, of having these initiation um, uh, practices and it doesn't have to be something that's been practiced for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. You can just make one up yourself today mm -hmm. and that'll be it. Whatever works for you. So what do you think then um, is when you say make something up? So, so what has to happen? Do you think? Oh, look, um, I guess it, it can be something as, as, uh, as simple as a, a physical activity for, for instance, um, my family, uh, been going through, uh, our own challenges and it, how I worked with the kids in, in recent weeks um, was to get to express themselves onto paper. Mm -hmm. So just write things down. How do you feel? Why do you feel this? What can you do to, to work through this or mm -hmm. to, to help you transition through this feeling? And they've written everything down, everything. And it was so amazing, so powerful. Um, and then at night, we lit, lit the fire, mm -hmm. um, you know, we had to pick a cool, like nice crisp evening. Uh, <laughs> can you imagine putting the fire on up in uh, the Queensland scorching heat? Um, so we lit the fire and then we just stood around the fire and they um, just re read the notes and then just said a few things um, just off, off the cuff and mm -hmm. just chuckled in the fire and just released it like that. And, and the, you, you just see them, you just like, just the behavior shift, mm -hmm. like the, they, they, they grow, like not, not mm. physically, but just emotionally, they, you know, they were all crying around the fire. And, and some people might say, wow, Mick, that's pretty full on, like what you're doing to your kids. But to me and, and them, cause this is something that we talk about beforehand. Yeah. That's kind of like an, a little initiation practice that we go through if we want to release our, our emotions that are um, not toxic, but just kind of um, disrupting, disrupting. Yeah. Our Something that's maybe being held on to. And so, so what yeah. I'm getting there is the letting go of, and I know, you know, parts of initiation is yeah. almost <laughs> looking at, you know, like kind of the, the death of something. Yeah. Right. And so for you, when it comes to the culture and this initiation, you know, that, that a boy must, go through is that something that's happening there it's kind of in part you know not to to really speak to the heightened version of, of that term death but the death of the letting mm. go of yep the boy yep. in one sense he always is there but so that the man can kind of emerge from the flame so to speak yeah absolutely so that's yeah whatever like exactly that and that that's almost like the personal development that we, mm -hmm. we have to really focus on um the self first mm -hmm. and not, not in a selfish way but just just look at the the individual and go all right where 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 is he at mm -hmm. so in, in my case where am i at with my compass how are all my four points going like he's if i were to put like rate them and put dots on each of the the, the four points of my compass will i get a perfect circle if yeah. i do get a, a a reasonable circle then my wheels going around perfectly. Yeah. But there's times where I don't get a perfect circle. You cannot push your wagon if your wheels not round. Mm. Um, and that's, that's, that's like in life. So personal development, um, productive learning, I guess would be another one as, okay. as the points for initiation. Yeah. Uh, it's constantly doing things and, uh, um, journaling for me, that's, that's productive uh, learning because I'm constantly learning about myself and others mm. and I'm constantly growing, um, doing things like coaching, uh, mentors mm -hmm. and uh, someone um, as wonderful such as yourself is, is a great coach. Um, and I've, I follow your work very closely and you know, that's you helping men, um, not just uh, 
transition through these phases that we, we go through in life, but to, to have an outcome, to have a purpose, a meaning. Um, and all in all, I think what I experienced, especially in the uh, last year during the initiation mm. was uh, empowerment, holistic right. empowerment. It was just about sitting there in the hut with my nephew, having a chat to him, having a laugh, just like we are doing right now, having a conversation, just interacting, forming a relationship, building that trust and it, it's empowering not just it wasn't just empowering for me but i'm sure it was for him um to have someone like myself sitting there across from him and just having a chat yeah in the heart just beautiful, beautiful. being yeah. seen yeah exactly yeah, invited to a new place i think that's yep. that's something i think is really powerful and then you know on a broader scale i, I know um you know I'm, I'm actually listening to some content at the moment around initiation is it's incredibly mm. insightful stuff. So then what I want to ask is, so then what part does this then play back into the community? The initiation of mm. this, this person. So it's all, it's almost like the, the young warrior then becomes that rock for the community. Mm -hmm. So when we, when I, when we marched him, uh, or is that the right term? Marched him when we took him from the from the hut, mm -hmm. then to present the young warrior to the family, to say um, is uh, Kaukui, which is a young man. Mm -hmm. We've we've done all the right things, and we've uh, shaved. He had his shave, and now he's ready. Um, I was. I said something. And this was, you know, obviously it was advice from my uncles. Um, but it went something like this. Um, so what it meant was we've, when, when we make the spears out of the bamboos, you, it's a lengthy process. So we have to straighten the spear. And you go, they, they kind of have like little, uh, I don't know what they're called, but rivets or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so you got you to work on them and straighten them, hang it up on the tree and bring it down and do it the same thing again until you get a perfect, perfectly straight spear. Um, so that's kind of like what we do with the young men mm. throughout the initiation process. We straightening him through, through, through the values, the cultural values, mm. We're sharing our experiences with him. We take him hunting and that sort of thing. And so that's what he learns throughout it. And it's like we're straining that spear so that then he's then able to provide or, or um, be that rock for his family. And yeah. Him. Yeah. And the other thing that I'm getting there is, you know, a, a spear that isn't straight doesn't fly. Yeah, it doesn't. So well, whereas <laughs> when it's straight, it, yeah. it, it can actually follow, you know, can see the direction and it can follow that direction. Absolutely with Absolutely. impact um yeah and and the other thing too i said was um uh i should think back um so not not to see and not is the the platform uh, this is back in uh, ancient days when we never had, had like um uh, motorized boats and stuff like mm -hmm. that so they used to build these uh, things, um, platforms, and stick them out in the in the ocean. Like obviously not like too deep, just a, um, they put them on the reef or something. Mm -hmm. And men would stand on top of that, sometimes for days, and they would sit there or stand there and wait till till the their catch or whatever they were hunting would swim up right. to the platform, and then that's how they caught um food for their families and you can imagine standing there hot sun you've mm -hmm. only probably got like a couple of coconuts sitting there where you can drink from to hydrate yourself no food you you would then you would then like in terms of the cultural value you would learn humility you would mm -hmm. learn patience mm -hmm. uh, you would learn all these important things that makes you a, a great hunter, a true warrior. And obviously we don't do that anymore. Stand on a, put a kid on a platform. 
I don't know if any of us would be able to uh, survive doing that. Yeah. There are other ways of doing stuff, other ways of doing things that kind of resembles that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Why with our initiation, as we were discussing, that anyone who's listening right now can come up with their own initiation, can create their own way of ritual with themselves, their families, their wives, their partners, um, whatever, whatever works to actually connect yourself to your inner self, if that mm. makes sense. And, and that, that's what I said. So to provide uh, the community with, with his catch. And that, that was the, mm. the whole analogy behind it was that we straighten this young man, this young boy, uh, like we do with the bamboo. And then now we're handing him over to the family in saying that he's, he's ready to then do the same thing what us men have already done mm. and for the generations to follow. Beautiful. I love it. Thank you for sharing yeah. its story and, well. and the journey that's taken us on. Um, and ah, some beautiful little reflection mm. points in there and also for sharing it, uh, some of that in, in your language. Um, so one of the things I want to ask you then as we come to the end of this, Mick, is, you know, you said a, cu a couple of many things in there, <laughs> but one being there was this <laughs> Mick who was kind of, in a circle that wasn't necessarily going anywhere you this incident happened you know with your wife and your son and then you started to explore things and there's been this this shift and this ex exploration and the, the points of the compass and so on and and i was just said well look this is actually kind of the mech that i've i've known and this is the mech that i see i see this groundedness i see this presence and so i've got a couple of questions for you one what do you think that is like, what, what would you call that and then the second question is what has been important for you to kind of really get to that? What would you call that? Yeah. You know, I, I use those words, groundedness, presence for you. Yeah. What, what is that? Is it something that you can recognize in yourself? Oh, look, there's so many things that I could, um, that I could say to kind of explain like, what would I call that? But the, the one thing that I always, um, you know, people go to me like, Oh, you're, you're so, um, like they, they share their experiences on what they think of me. Uh, my Karina does that all the time. And or with your stories, the way you talk and, and stuff like that, it all comes down to one thing and that's humility. Mm -hmm. And humility is the biggest thing for us in our culture. Whenever we do something um, like this here, you and I, 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 was, I honored you for that. And I had to uh, humble myself before you, as if to say like, you are the one who, who is, um, uh, how do I explain it? But I, I am in your service, mm -hmm. so to speak. I am here to, um, Obviously, your purpose uh, is much greater than than the. Um, how do I put it in words? You you're helping men, yeah. Mm -hmm. And this conversation will provide a space for for men not just to uh, heal, but also to to learn and grow mm -hmm. grow from. And that cause that purpose is so big that I then have to humble myself mm. to help you to sit to, to be at your service so that we can reach all your audience. And then that's, that's the, that's the thing that we always acknowledge whenever we, um, through events, um, through feastings, through special occasions, through, uh, through deaths, when we have funerals, um, mm -hmm. or everyone that whoever talks always has to say that. And they humble themselves. So, my like mina came up as in in So, as I like to say, I am very, very humbled to be in this space. And I do it with the kids. I, I mm. we go down to the beach. Um, my son, uh, junior, surfs every Saturdays, 
and you see him walk down and he stops before he enters the water. And that's what we say. We, we are passing, we, we humble ourselves to be in that space and then we request permission to enter the water. Mm. And, and that's, that's, that's what I see. That's what I feel. Mm. That humility. And the second one is, um, it's, a, it's a constant, constant growth, constant learning. And it's, it's all, it's, it's about finding, finding what's right for you. Mm-hmm. You know, there's so many things out there that people can, um, give you advice and direct you and, and things like that. But at the end of the day, it's, it's all about you and what, what works for you. Um, after this conversation to, to debrief myself, you know, to go through this journey with you this morning is, is quite, uh, it's powerful. Uh, it's emotional. Um, it, 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 it's kind of, you know, really bringing the, all the, the past traumas back in, in, into play. Mm-hmm. Um, not knowing how to deal with this, these kind of experiences can really uh, uh, impact your day-to-day living. Mm-hmm. So yeah. what worked for me, like I, I will journal about it, mm-hmm. but straight after this, I, I might go outside and do some gardening. So I've got some gardening stuff waiting there. So Beautiful. I've been sitting there for a week. <laughs> so, You've been waiting for this yeah, conversation. Yes, I've been waiting. I knew there was something coming up. So You're welcome. And Trina, and Trina, yeah, thank you. And Trina will come back and she's gone for a walk with the little one and she'll go, oh, now you want to do gardening? And I'll say, no, it was, it was inspired by Mike. Inspired by Mike. Beautiful. Um, <laughs> thank you for sharing that. And I want to share as well a word that, that popped up for me in all of it. That you're the, that you're sharing, and that is respect. I, I I get this deep sense of respect is is almost a foundation for all of that, right? For the humility, for you know everything basically that you've, that you've discussed. How I respect myself, how I respect those around me, my family, my community, and so on. Which I see, and and I have um, felt that, and I also respect you for for sharing that, and I do honour you, and, and very much appreciate you for sharing. All of this story, fascinating. I'm so happy that I can introduce some of you know your culture to um, the listeners, and um, yeah, I, I, if they would like to learn more about you, what you do in the world, where they, can they find you? Let's start there. Mm. Where can they find you? Where can they find me? Um, Online. What are you doing with your business? They. You know, I still practice ancient rituals, ancient teachings. So if they want to find me, they're going to have to look really hard for that smoke signal. <laughs> or, or, or I might have to send them the pigeon. <laughs> um, I went through this phase, in uh, not, not a phase, it was a, a, a growth process uh-huh. um, where yeah, I went nice. without phone for nearly two years. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was... Uh, well, actually, I, got, I only got the phone last year before the manifest. Right. Um, but prior to that, I had no contact. So every time people found it frustrating and said to like me, well, you got to get something. I said, well, why? Because <laughs> we got to contact you. Well, for, I kept saying that to them, like, well, look for the smoke signals. <laughs> Should have gone to flex savers. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, uh, no in a, on a serious note, um, we do have a, a, a social enterprise um, where we, where a, a lot of it is to do with uh, this, this kind of um, what we talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's all bringing that awareness into uh, young men and young women's um, lives, and and we we go we go to schools, and um, at the moment we kind of. Uh, We've re- rebranding ourselves, um, so kind of starting afresh. And okay, then, so yeah. that has a name, or that's being rebranded. Uh, so the name is still what we've always had, which is uh, Kain Revolution. So mm-hmm. Kain, in in Kalalagoya, our language, um, Kain means uh, it, it means new, it means rejuvenation, right. 
uh, it means regeneration, regrowth. So when new shoots come through, we, we say on oh, this Kain Malgui come through. Um, so Kain Revolution, uh, you will find that on um, Instagram and Facebook and. Um, yeah, I'll get all I'll get all the necessary things and make sure that people can yeah, find them. Yeah, sorry, um, I'm kind Beautiful. of I'm kind of um, promoting my own business here. Sorry, mate. That's it. I asked you the question. How how can people find you? But Mick Barney, Mick Barney's just type in Mick Barney and you'll you'll come across the only Mick Barney, the only Mick oh, Barney shit. on uh, on the on online. Um, yeah. I've, I've got Instagram and Facebook. Um, but yeah, I, I, um, I'm always, I'm always learning, always learning, Beautiful. always growing. Yeah. Well, thank you for letting us into a little part of your journey and that growth. Oh, and it's been, a, it's been an honor and a pleasure. And, um, yeah, everyone, you know, if you do want to learn more about Mac, go and check him out. Clearly the mm. only Mac Barney. Here's the thing before we finish up. Please. You know how we said about like finding your identity and, and connectedness, and I've only come up, I've only found an M. Perhaps someone out there might want to come on this journey with me to help me find the I. I think the I might be your job. <laughs> yes, <laughs> brother. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. You've been listening to the Everyday Legends Podcast, the show dedicated to helping everyday men build legendary relationships with yourself, with your partners, and in your world. If you have got something from this podcast, please share it with someone that you think could benefit from it. And please visit your home for podcasts. Like us, subscribe to us, leave us a review. Your feedback is phenomenal in getting this in front of more eyes and ears. Until next time, I'm Mike Campbell and remember to build that legendary